Hey guys, I just finished my online class this afternoon and now I want you to take a little break. So in this little break, I will read some books. Of course, we will continue reading Wave Me Goodbye and this time will be chapter 4. That's so good! Chapter 3, Shirley finally have a best friend called Jessica and in chapter 4, they arrived in a new land which they have never been there before and see what happened. So let's get started. Chapter 4. The train popped into the small station and ground to a halt. I saw signs suspended from two chains. Meadow Ridge. There was a murmur as everyone read it. Right girls, out you get and will betide anyone who leaves her suitcase behind, Charlie Chaplin commanded. Spring into action. I struggled with mine, scarcely able to lift it. Here, you pull and I'll push, said Jessica. She helped me edge it out into the corridor, and then she jumped it down the steps and helped steer it as I pushed it slowly down to the platform. We were both panting when we got there. It feels like we've got not just Pauline, Petrova, and Posy, but all madams fiddle a stage school in there, Jessica declared. What? said Munchen. Totally baddie. Pair of them, said Goofy, making a skeering gesture into her head. Talking total loony babble, said Freckle Face. Girls, come along. It's so crowded. We must all stick together, Charlie Chaplin shouted. Three other nuns were waving and gesturing like giant bats, herding their own purple charges into a long line. Paradise Road pupils were dashing all over the place. Half the boys were already tearing along the platform to look at the engine, though we were supposed to be going out through a wicked gate at the other end. I saw my own class wandering about, Marilyn Henderson showing up as always. Mary hovered nearby. She seemed so moozy and boring. I wonder how I could have ever wanted her as a friend. I had Jessica now, the most interesting girl I'd ever met. And she liked me. She didn't give two hoots if I said toilet instead of WC. Charlie Chaplin didn't need to command me to stay close. I scudded along beside Jessica, howling my case, my arm feeling as if it was being pulled right out of its socket. We passed through the wicket gate, two at a time, and were then herded down a dusty path with hedges on either side. I caught sight of Annie, the friendly, short-haired WVS lady. Please, miss, where are we going? I puffed. To the village hall. Someone sits down this lane. Who knows? She said cheerfully. All I do know is that we're at Meadow Ridge, and we seem to be in the depth of the country. Breathe in and smell that lovely fresh country air. We were all wrinkling our nose and trying not to breathe, because there was the most disgusting smell wafting on the breeze. Who farted? A boy yelled, and a teacher squatted him on the back of the head for being rude. I don't know, but it must be a giant to make that pong. Annie jumped up and peered through the top of the hedge where the branches straggled. Ah, I thought so. Wait till we get to the gate up there. We're going to see a sight for sore eyes. Everyone started pushing and shoving to get there first, and even Sister Josephine hurried along in her stout black shoes, lifting her long skirt because the lane was getting very mucky. And there, through the gate, we saw a herd of black and white creatures peacefully munching grass, ignoring us. One lifted up its tail, and a brown shower pulsated out onto the ground. There was a great shriek of hilarity and disgust. 
saw the little ones were trying to run away, clearly scared. Sister Josephine caught hold of a small boy with a shaven head who started to pelting back towards the railway station. No, no, you mustn't run away, you naughty boy, she said, hanging onto his arm. Got to, missus, there's monster in that field, he protested. Don't be silly, they're only cows, she said. Cows? He repeated, yes. Surely you know what cow is. How it's how you get your milk. You what, missus? The cows give you lovely creamy milk, said Sister Josephine. She had a little gang of children staring at her now, while the, while the street Agatha's girl nudged each other in a superior way. How do they know, how do they do that, Sister Josephine? Machi asked innocently. Yes. Exactly how, Sister Josephine, Goofy repeated. Don't be silly, girls. You know perfectly well, she said, though in pink. Yeah, but we don't, missus, said the little boy. This isn't time or the place for a nature lesson, said Sister Josephine. Now come along. We have to find a village hall, quick, sharp. The children stay put, staring at the cows in puzzlement. You must all be soft, said an older boy. I've had a family, I've had a holiday on a farm. I've seen all the cows being milked. The farmer squeezed those pink, daggly things between their legs. Udders, they called. All the children shriek again. I wasn't simple. I knew all the milking cows from storybooks. But it was the first time I've seen Anders close up, and the whole process did seem hilariously revolting. I don't think I'm ever going to drink milk again, I told Jessica. I've always hated it anyway, she said. What was that strange drink you had on the train? Dandelion and burdock, I said. Does it taste lovely? It's lovely. I should have given you a sip. I'll get my mom to buy you a bottle if you like. I said without thinking, but when was I going to see mom? How long was this little holiday was going to last? Was if I was stuck here for weeks, months, forever? I suddenly felt sick and dizzy. My hand was so slippery with sweat that I lost my grip on the suitcase and it fell onto the road with a thud. Here, I'll help you said Jessica. I nodded my thanks, not daring to open my mouth in case I threw up. It would be terrible if I were to stick down my best fair owl jumper. I didn't want to end up sticking like Mary. You look all wobby, said Jessica. Sit down on your suitcase for a minute. She gently pushed me down and sat beside me. Is it the cow smell? She asked. I shrugged my shoulders and then fidgeted with the straps on my shoes. They were really rubbing me now, and the patent was getting horribly dusty. I love your shoes, said Jessica. Look at my disgusting clod hoppers and this vile uniform. My tonic much too big for me. It's practically trailing on the ground. Nanny said... She turned up the hem for me and took it a bit at the side seams so it wouldn't be so bunchy. But my mother sent her packing before she had a chance. How could I could see it for you? I said, Can you really see? You? She asked, Of course I can. I said airily, I've seen dresses and nighties and all sorts. I hadn't really seen any proper clothes, but I've made several outfits for my doll. Ginny grinned. That would be ever so kind of you, said Jessica. Hey, you new bug. It was horrible, Goofy, again. Sister, just fine looking for ya. We've all got to keep together. Come on, she talked at Jessica Blazer. Oh, get lost, said Jessica. And why do you keep calling me new bug? It's pathetic. You're the one who's pathetic, said Goofy, tossing her plates over her shoulder. You're obviously new bug because you're new to our school, and you're so lowly, you're like a little loathsome, creepy, crawly bug. Anyway, are you coming or not? Not, said Jessica. Well, don't blame me if you get the hairbrush tonight. The hairbrush? 
sister Josephine has an especially hard hairbrush, and anyone who's been really naughty gets whacked with it after supper. It really hurts. I bet you'll boo your eyes out. Doofy flounces off to join the others. I can't stand her or that munchkin," said Jessica. "Neither can I," I said. "Are you feeling better now?" she asked. "A bit." Then I suppose we better get going," she said. I stood up and struggled to lift my suitcase again. "I'll take a turn," said Jessica. "You can carry mine. That's not fair on you, though." I protested. "I don't mind. I'm quite strong. You know, once I tried to lift Nanny up for a laugh, got her feet right off the ground. Goodness." Jessica flexed her muscle comically, like Poppy, the sailor man. "Give it here." So she swapped suitcase and joined the jostling troop of children. The lane got wider, the hedges smaller, and we started to see houses—small houses with tackle gardens—and people peering at us as if we were a circle parade. One old lady smiled and waved, and another came hobbling to her gate and offered us all jelly babies from a big paper bag. Mom had always warned me about taking sweets from strangers, so I hesitated and then shook my head politely. But Jessica took two. Don't you like jelly babies? I absolutely love them, especially the black ones. She said, happily decapitating one. Yes, but I didn't like to. I mumbled, "Silly sausage." Jessica had already queued up her first sweet and was licking the second with her pink pointed tongue. I breathed in the sweet jelly smell. Here, have this one. Here, have it handed over. You don't mind that I've licked it, do you? I haven't got any bugs, even though that's what those stupid girls call me. I don't mind a bit. I said. I felt a soaring happiness that we were close enough friends to share licked sweets. But then an old man with a very neat garden, all red, white, and blue in regimental order, came out of his gate and started shouting at us, "Get back where you belong, you bunch of young hooligans!" He hollered, "What are you doing here? We don't want you, nasty little thieving cockneys!" I'm not a cockney. Said Jessica, "I was born in America, and my father's originally from Lisbon, and my mother's of Irish origin." As if I care, you snippy little miss," he said. "You can't kid me. You're all from London, and that makes you all bleeding Cockneys." Jessica raised her eyebrows at me. "Hello, bleeding Cockney," she said to me the minute we were past him. "Watch your snippy little miss." I said, and we both cracked up laughing. The houses were clustered together now, and when we peered around, we saw much larger homes on this lower slope of a hill. I wondered if someone, if one of them belonged to this lady Amersham, who was letting Street Agatha set up school in her house. Said Jessica. I wish I went to your school. I don't think any lady would really let Paradise Road people near her house. I said, "Look, everything's muddled now. Most of the nuns don't have a clue who I am. Why don't we pretend we're new to the convent too?" Jessica suggested. "Yes, but I haven't got the uniform." I said. She put my suitcase down and wriggled out of her blazer. "You have now," she said, holding it out for me. I can't take your blazer. Yes, you can. I'll say I lost mine, and I'll write to my mother and ask her to get me a new one. She used to me losing stuff," said Jessica. "But I haven't got a blouse or a tie or the right tunic," I said. "Well, who cares?" And Sister Josephine knows I'm not one of you lot. Well, you can go in one of the other classes and kid them your new girl. Only they'll call you new bug too, and you'll find that very annoying. Said Jessica. Better than toty toilet, I said. Anyway, put the blazer on. You're so good to me. Look, let's share all my books, and you can have ballet shoes for yourself. Honest, I felt a bit dizzy as I said it, and I knew I might regret it. Still, I didn't need Pauline, Petrova, and Posy as friends now. Not when I had Jessica. Let's share it. She said, "Let's share everything, you and me, because we're best friends, right?"
Definitely. Look, there's another bigger place up on that hill over there. A real mansion. That will be our new school. I bet. I stared up at it. It was very large and white and elegant, terrifyingly grand. I felt my throat dry, and I wish I still had some dandelion amber dock. Will this lady still be living there too? I asked anxiously. Oh yeah, I think so. So sh will she have servants? Well, obviously, she can imagine a titled lady down on her knees, scrubbing all the floors in that huge house, can you? I don't like the idea of servants. I said, why nurse not? Jessica asked. I was frightened that it'd be just as snobby as the street Agatha's girl and sniff at my accent and my pink knickers and raise their eyebrows if I forgot that I mustn't say the word toilet anymore. But I didn't want to admit this to Jessica because it made me sound so wet. I think it's right. One set of people having to do all the dirty work for another set. I said, adopting a lofty manner as I could manage. It's mean and unfair, just because they weren't born posh. I suppose you could say that, but servants seem to have a much better time than the people they work for. Our servants were always having secret parties that they let me come to, but they never knew. But I never tell my mother, and Nancy, my mom, my mother's maid, often used to dress up in her clothes sometime. She wore them when she was going out with her sweetheart, just to impress him. She looked fantastic too, though of course it would be so hard not to look impressive in Valnet. I nodded, though I didn't have a clue who these strange foreign sounding people were and the sort of clothes they designed, and Nanny was technically a servant, but she liked looking after me. I know she did, said Jessica. Yes, I'm sure she did. It was silly of me to say that, I said apologetically. No, no, you still have a point, said Jessica, also wanting us to agree. She paused, nibbling her lip. Surely, have I put my foot in it? I blinked at her. In what way? Well, I just wondered, is your mom actually a servant? She asked, going pink. My mom would be outraged to hear that. No, she is managing director personal secretary. I said, elaborating each syllable carefully. Well, she's going to be now. She didn't work at all before, apart from when she left school, when she was a typist in a solicitor office. Oh, sorry, sorry. So now I put my foot in it, said Jessica. No, not at all, I told her. Here, do let me take my suitcase back. You've been carrying for ages. It must be hurting you terribly. I tell you, I can carry things heaps heavier than this suitcase, Jessica insisted. But when I forced her to let me take a turn, I saw that her palm was bright red with wheels across it, as if she's been giving the cane. I felt terrible. Better drink some water. But knew she'll be upset if I commented. I took the handle and held the case along myself. I wondered how heavy I had been for a dad when it was full of brushes. What must have been have been like calling on house after house after house after house, mostly being turned away at the door, even when he was invited to a display and demonstrate each brush. When he got out his order book, out the housewife would often sigh and said she wasn't sure she better consult her husband. She was sorry she couldn't possibly commit to any purchase without his say so. Dad would act it all out for mom and me, trying to make it funny, mimicking this lady, his voice all high pitch and silly. But I could see that it was actually sad. Mom wasn't a bit sympathetic. She'll tell Dad it must be a useless salesman if he could never make a sale, especially with brushes. When any fool knew that every housewife needed a handful, and the Bristol were out soon enough. Sometimes Dad got angry and told her to stop nagging, and sometimes he didn't even bother replying. Just sat there on the sofa with his arms dangling between his knees and his head bowed. No wonder he's been in such a hurry to join up and be a soldier. Everything was happening in a hurry. 
Year after year, we've been jogging along together as a family. And yet now dad was away in the army and mom was gonna work. And I was in a place called Metal Rich, which I've never even heard of it until 15 minutes ago. I thought mom and dad and all, and I fit it together tightly, like three pieces of jigsaw puzzle. Oh, how I wish, I wish we were all together. Now, we've been abruptly broken up. It was a disaster, wasn't it? Though dad might like being a soldier, mom might like being a personal secretary. I knew I wouldn't like it at Street Agatha's with all those Shrek sisters and snobby girls. I knew I wouldn't like it one bit, but I like Jessica enormously, and as long as we stuck together, then everything would be all right. We were now trailing at the end the long line of children. We were now at that because I was so slow dragging my case. I was so hot. My vest was sticking to my back inside my jumper. Jessica's blazer felt like fur coat, but I took it, but I couldn't take it off because I had to pass as a street Agatha's pupil. Then the line gradually got smaller, and when I squinted up ahead, I saw that the children were all being guided into a red brick building by the crossroads. That must be the village hall, I said. Stick with me, kid. Jessica murmured ass up the side of her mouth like an American gangster in a film. You bet I will. I said, I tried to do an American accent too, but I was no good at it. Annie and another WVS lady with big clipboard were standing at the door. The little boy with a shaven head was leaning against Annie's hip, his fist clapping the stiff material of her skirt. Here we are again, she said cheerily. Now, I'm to take up your names and schools. I'm Jessica Lipman. Jessica said, I'm a Treats Agatha's, and it's my friend Shirley, and she's a Treats Agatha's too. Annie took Jessica off, but then looked at me, her head at one side. Aren't you a Paradise Road people, Shirley? I'm in the convent now, I said, flapping my pink purple blazer. Are you sure? Yes, she's a new girl like me. We're gonna stick together, said Jessica. Annie raised her eyebrows but gave me a tick and added my name to the street Agatha's column. Her colleague stared. Annie, she said sharply. As if it matters, said Annie. If they want to be together, why can't they? Go and wait inside, girls. I wanted to fling my arms around her neck. Thank you, I breathed. Yes, thank you ever, ever, ever so much, said Jessica. And we went inside hand in hand. The hall was already crowded with children. Village ladies were handing out cups of milk and a current bun to a child. Our lady barely grants at us, just taking our purple blazer. The street Agatha's pupil are right over at the back of the hall, waiting for Lady Amersham's cart to collect all the suitcase. Then go to walk up the White House in a crocodile. Said she said, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock said Jessica. I giggled, so happy that I've read Peter and Wendy, and knew all about the crocodile who swallow a clock. We pushed our way through the heavy mass of children, over to the large purple group at the end. Keep away from Sister Josephine, I said. We won't go anywhere near old Charlie Chaplin. We'll stick with the firm below. We're both quite small, said Jessica. Yes, but they're soon twig. I'm not really a straight Agatha's girl. I said anxiously, I'll be okay once we there at this white house. You won't have anywhere else to go, will ya? So they'll have to keep you, Jessica told me. They think I'm not posh enough. I said, oh, that's total rubbish. Do stop fussing. I'll work out. I promise. She helped me lock my suitcase right to the back, near all the girls in purple, pushing some little Paradise Road boys up a bench so we could sit down and drink her milk and eat the buns in peace. Watch it, one said angrily. Who do you think you are shoving like that? I'm sorry, but these benches are for straight Agatha's girl. I said, stupid snooty pants, he said, and then slope up. There, he thinks her a poche said Jessica. It was so noisy in the room I could hardly hear her. You were squeezing in too, peering intently at everyone. 
Several women already had hold of little girls, pretty one with curly hair, and clean faces. A big lady in a tweed suit and an old purple hat with a little feather stood on a chair and blew a whistle. Ladies, ladies, ladies! She shouted. I'm Mrs. Henshaw, chairman of the Women's Institute. I've been put in charge of the building. I'll allocate the children to their new homes. I'm afraid this is turning into a bear garden. Let's have a little order. Please be patient and don't attempt to choose any children just yet. We must let all the street Agatha's pupils go first. Apparently, Lady Amersham Scadina has a record this cut. You can go now, girls, and deposit your suitcase in it. Jessica squeezed my hand. I squeezed back. We took our suitcase and stood at the back of the purple line. I kept my head down in case any Paradise Road children saw me. I practically bent double when I saw Marilyn Henderson nearby, but I managed to get in the door without anyone calling after me. Street Agatha's girl were handing their suitcase to a strange man who looked like Gummidge, with a long mad hair gathering up girls. Sister Josephine was right at the front, well away from us. Jessica turned to me, selling. See, we just tap along at the end of the crocodile. Simple. We waited with our suitcase. Jessica offered hers to Wazom Gamage. We were switching the cases into a neat stack. He swung it up easily on the back of the cart. It was my turn. I tried to lift Dad's case, but it was so tired and I could only raise a couple of inches off the ground. Jessica seized hold of the handle to help. Grummit shook his head up pitily. He squatted our hands off the way and picked up the suitcase. and was taken by surprise. The weight bowed his arm. Though he lost his grip and fell to the ground with such a crash that the locks burst open. My belongings scattered everywhere. All my books, Timmy Ted, my smock dress, nighty, sponge bag, hair ribbon, vest, and a pair of pink knickers with frills. Oh no. I sank to my knees and desperately started gathering them all up. Jessica helping. The other girls were all crying around, giggling, remarking my embarrassing underwear on. Sister Josephine came flapping over to see what was going. What on earth is it now? She demanded. She looked at my suitcase and then she looked at me. What are you doing here? Take your rush suitcase and all your belongings and go back to the village halls at once. But she's coming to our school, Sister Josephine. Look, she's wearing a street Agatha's blazer," said Jessica. "Nonsense! She's the Paradise Road child. You were so poly with on the train. Now do come along. Apparently, it's a good half hour to walk, ladies, Ashman. So look sharp." Now you don't understand, Sister Josephine. Shirley left Paradise Road now. She's coming to her convent. Her mother's gonna fix it. She's running to you, Jessica gabbled. I very much doubt it, Jessica. Please stop these pointless fibs and say goodbye to this little girl," said Sister Such Sis Sis Sister Josephine firmly. I can't bear to say goodbye. Shirley's my best friend in all the world. Jessica declared as she threw her arm round me. For goodness' sake, stop acting so hysterically! You've only known the child five minutes. Come along at once, or you will be severely punished. Say, sister, Josephine shook her hard. And you, Shirley, she said my name as it made a bad taste in her mouth. Take that blazer off immediately and give it back to Jessica. I give it to her. Jessica protested. You have no right to do such a thing. That blazer is the finest quality from Harrods. Whatever would your mother say? She wouldn't mind in the slightest. Said Jessica. Don't get the blazer off, Shirley. You keep it. I don't want the grudge thing. But Sister Josephine took hold of me and pulled it off. She snapped my suitcase shut and tucked it up right. Now take your ridiculous case and get back inside the village hall. This instant, Jessica, you will walk in with me at the front in disgrace. Come along, sister. Come along, girls. 
She marched up so determinedly that her habit swung round, exposing her thick ankles and stout shoes. She dragged Jessica along, struggling and willing and crying out to me. I stared after them, crying too, of course. Hey, hey, cheer up, chicken, said Annie, hurrying over to me. Oh, dear. I didn't really think you'd get away with it. I'm so sorry. Come inside with me, and we'll try to find you a lovely new billet. Hopefully with another girl, just your friend. I don't want any other girl. I want Jessica. I sobbed. She put her arm round my shoulder, picked up my case, and led me back inside. You sit on the bench at the front. I'll make the other children squash up so there's room for you. I'm sure you get picked soon, she said cheerily. I sat on the very end of the bench, still sniveling. I waited and waited and waited and waited. What a sad ending. We all thought that Jessica and Shirley was going to be together, but because sadly they were in different schools. But what will happen in chapter 5? We'll find out. Bye!